let's talk about Dark Elves. Ooh, Dark Elves. Ooh, you're so evil. Oh, Dark Elves. If only I could tame you. Uh, yeah. Hold on. I just, I was reading this the other day. I just want to read you something. Means, hold on. For a dark elf, the infliction of misery and pain, the delicate art of murder and torture, are his only means of expression. He can take joy only from the suffering of others. So, awesome. Maybe a good army for your girlfriend. Um, so you got dark elves. Now, let's take a look at this list. Uh, this is the army I'm playing. I've played it. I've owned two dark elf armies. I have played both with them and against them. And here are my impressions. Uh, and I'm, I'm only talking to a beginning player because uh, I'm, I, I really suck at Warhammer. Let's face it. In fact, you'd be better off just kind of discounting anything I say. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's start with the core units because that's really where you want to go. Uh, the same thing can be done with Dark Elves, with the Cavalry Switcheroo, as can be done with Wood Elves, because they have Dark Riders as a core unit. I love the Dark Riders. They play that same role. They work really well uh, with the other units. In fact, I would definitely take at least a unit of them. And as uh, you may have seen in some of the other videos, you can, do, you can take the Wood Elf Glade Rider box and mix it in with Dark Elf bits and uh, some green stuff cloaks and make some really wicked Dark Riders. Yeah, that's kind of the way to go too because the Dark Rider models that are published are uh, pretty old and crusty. I think they're at least 10 years old. So not their best sculpts, let's just say that. All right, you got Dark Elf Warriors at six points a model. I think they're useful fodder and filler, but uh, really nothing too special. <clears throat> you have Crossbowmen. Now, in a typical army, you're going to have something like this. You're going to have a couple of blocks of infantry. This is what I would start with. I'd start with a block or two of infantry. I'd start with a unit of cavalry. Then you get uh, a few of units of archers or, or war machines. And you can... Um, uh, that, that's really a bait. You throw in some characters and some spellcasters. This is really what a basic army is going to look like. Now, if you go with a cavalry army, you really just you want a block of infantry. This is what I call the anvil. Your tar baby, as it were. Like, you move this unit out and you're like, go ahead, charge it. Because whatever gets in there, you're, it's just going to kind of gum things up. And then you're going to come in and mop up with your various faster units that have already moved around from behind and been whittling around. Uh, whittling down the enemy. Um, so the cavalry army looks a little something like this. Two or three units of cavalry, a good solid block of infantry. If that, um, some people have tried uh, all cavalry armies, but those do tend to break down in a prolonged fight. And that's the danger, is that your enemy will tar pit you, and uh, basically the, the, they won't be able to... Uh, your line of cavalry will dissolve, basically, because cavalry doesn't do that well in protracted fights, usually. All right, so that's an alternate. Uh, you almost can't go wrong by just taking one of each thing. Uh, One-trick ponies get the smackdown in Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, a player who's more experienced, who um, knows what they're doing, will be able to coordinate his vastly more diversified army to kind of hit you where you're weak and you will get picked apart. <laughs> Heaven knows it's happened to me uh, enough that I show up, I'm like, my Cahorn army is the push broom of the gods and they will sweep all foes before them. You cannot defeat me because my line stretches from one end of the deployment zone to another. And guess what? I get totally crushed because I wasn't thinking ahead. And uh, I have an opponent who knows what he's doing. The other thing is the, the more uh, things you have, the more your opponent has to keep track of. He'll be like, uh, what's the special rules for Hydras again? Uh, you got Black Art Corsairs, big fan of those. Uh, those are like your little pirate raider guys. Uh, the Dark Elf Assassin, oh man, those things are wicked. 
basically they're put in a they're put in a block of troops and when your opponent charges or whenever you please you reveal the assassin and he gets to strike first so it's like oh i'm going to attack you with this huge unit oh my guy my big leader guy is just going to pound you and like yeah, that would be great, except let's see if we can do the assassin first. And then the assassin jumps out, pikes him in the heart, and that kind of takes the wind out of, uh, out of the sails there. Let's look at special. Uh, there's a ton of great things here. Uh, I really just want to do my plug for Blackguard of Nagarond uh, is a special choice. Those guys are, there's nothing not to love about them. Uh, which, it, I mean, they're tough, they're stubborn, they're immune to psychology, eternal hatred, warrior elite, they get to reroll attacks. They have two attacks each, just as basic stat. They have halberds, which get plus one to their strength. I mean, they're, they're just insane, and they're only 13 points apiece. So the Blackguard, I think, are just amazing. Because in Warhammer Fantasy, you have to remember that the game is not always A. A is not always won as a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle because really only the front ranks are fighting here. So you can't just look at a unit and say, oh, well, these guys are awesome. They have a great stat line. You have to think, how are these going to fit into the bigger picture? So that's where rules like fear and stubborn, those are gold. Those are gold because if this unit that's stubborn holds against this massive charge, even if they take huge casualties, it doesn't matter because they didn't break through and now your other guys can move in for the kill and so you really can't just look at the stat line you've got to look at their other abilities and how they're gonna fill the roles um, in uh, in magic the card game I've heard it expressed as questions and answers like every time you do something it's a question for your opponent to answer. For example, I'm going to take a unit of flying harpies around this flank and threaten your war machine. That's the question. What are you going to do about that? And in your army, you have to have answers, too. You have to say, well, I have units of fast cavalry. Or I'm playing a dwarf army, and there's a master engineer in the unit that's going to pike those harpies if they attack. And so you have to look at things in that context. Now, uh, for dark elves, they only have... Uh, two rare choices. That's the repeater Reaper Bolt Thrower, which is a ranged war machine, basically, and the War Hydra, which is a frontline killer. Uh, both of these are awesome. I'd say one of each, because the Hydra is, he's a line breaker, causes terror, so he gets in on your psychological game. I also might add Dark Elves have an additional sort of advantage in that almost every unit can somehow get fear through a magic banner that they have or that they cause fear, like the, the mounts, the cold ones, uh, are fear-causing creatures. So that's good psychology. So really, for rares, I'd say one of each. But the bolt throwers really are your best, most um, versatile option, uh, as you've seen in my various games. So to a beginning Dark Elf player, I recommend the following. Uh, get a master on uh, a, a dark steed. What is it? Yeah, dark steed or cold one. Uh, if you're playing against uh, ruthless players, I'd get a, a dark elf master on manticore. <laughs> and um, uh, corsairs or dark riders are good to start off with as uh, core choices. And uh, for specials, I would definitely recommend uh, cold one knights. Cold One Chariots and Blackguard of Nagarond. Uh, I might point out Cold One Knights have a problem with stupidity, which is a special rule of theirs, i.e. the Cold Ones are really not manageable. Uh, but they have a magic item called the Pearl of Infinite, Black, of Infinite Bleakness that gets rid of psychology for them, including stupidity, is my understanding. And Blackguard of Nagarond. Just straight up get a unit of those guys. They are awesome and then two Reaper Bolt Throwers. And that's it for Dark Elves.